Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Jean here. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. I had my grandchildren uh, for the weekend. My uh, oldest son is uh, celebrating his anniversary, so we had uh, three of our little grandbabies uh, for the weekend. But they went home. Um, they went back to my, my daughter is looking after them with um, her husband for the rest of the week. Um, so I, I wasn't sewing over the weekend. Actually, I was. I was making a, a project that's going to maybe be my next project, and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to put it up, but I, I, that's a long story. I make a, I make a short story even longer, as you know. Um, but what I was going to do today, everything settled down. I'm going to make something. I don't know if you know what these are. Um, I actually belong to a um, uh, quite a few Facebook quilting groups, and these are like the latest fad. Everybody's making these things which take two seconds to make. They're called bowl cozies. Do you see this? Now, what it is, it's, here's a bowl, here's a cozy. You stick the bowl in. You can actually put these in the microwave. Um, th everybody's making them. Um, so I'm like, oh, I want to make one. <laughs> I, I don't know if I like them. And the reason I say that is, is your, the stuff you make it with is, um, as I've explained, I have done a tutorial on it, how I made this. Um, it literally takes like 15 minutes. So they're cool gifts if you love them. That's good. Everybody's making like hundreds of them. Um, what you need is 100% cotton, and, and I've shown you this. You need, um, I use this, it's called Wrap and Zap. It's actually microwave safe. Not to be confused with our other stuff that can't go in the microwave, the Insulbrite. Make sure. You don't want to start a fire. And that's where my quandary is. Apparently, this is a little batted uh, cozy that you can put your soup in and heat it up in the microwave. You actually put this thing in a microwave. It's safe. You've used 100% cotton. You've used 100% cotton batting. You've used 100% cotton thread. Um, I'm, I'm uh, not so sure I love that. But, uh, but I made it anyway. It's cute. It's a little fruit, fruit themed fabric, a little fork fabric. I've shown you. Um, I don't know why you would put this in the microwave, but apparently everybody does. I think like if you heat up your soup and then you take your handy dandy oven gloves and take that out and then you want to go sit and watch, you know, pole dark or something, then you can just have that. And that makes sense to me. You know, or your, your, your ice cream is too cold, you put it in here. You know, your kid's mac and cheese is too hot, you put it in there when they're watching you know, Sesame Street type of thing. That makes sense. Why you put this in the microwave to heat up your stuff is beyond me. But that's what everybody does. This stuff is meant to go in the microwave. But this is my tutorial for today. Um, if you love them, you're going to be hooked. I made it actually, um, I was watching a few tutorials out of the 10, 10 inch squares. As I said in the, at the, as I'm finishing it, this is the first one I've ever made. It's cute. Does the job. Here's a smaller bowl and here's a larger bowl. To, and and it, 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 it does fit. I mean, it, it, because it's darted. You know, remember darts? They used to, you know, like if they're formed like that. So it does fit your bowls, but I would think that you'd want it a little bit bigger. But most everybody does these with a 10 inch square. So I did mine with a 10 inch square. Um, yeah. So there you go. A little tutorial on something that I may or may not <laughs> make again. But you may love them. You may go, oh, that's just what I need or my mother needs or my kids need. They're so cute. They make great presents for the holidays. So have at it. If you love them, make them. They don't take very long. I've done a pretty good tutorial on it. Um, maybe I'd make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'd make it like 11 inch square. Maybe to make to accommodate a little bit bigger. But anyway, that's my little tuto tutorial for today. A little bowl cozy, microwavable. You can put them in the microwave. It's 100% safe. Um, why you want to put something of fabric in the microwave is beyond me. But if you if you go on uh, any other YouTube, they stick the whole thing in the microwave. But I'm thinking, again, I'm thinking, it, it, what if your soup like splashes all over the place? Mind you, if you're in the microwave. And then your soup, you know, your soup could splash when you're sitting, you know, watching TV or your ice cream, they are washable, of course they are, um, but I, I just, do what you want with these if you make them. <laughs>
here's a little quick little tutorial for the day. Um, this is Jean here signing out. Um, yeah, whatever. For my for my um coat bowl cozies, what we're going to start with, I'll show you, is you're wanting to cut two pieces of fabric 10 inches square. Um, I've chosen for this one, as you've seen, more of a, um, a, a foodie type of thing. Um, you can get this. This makes up nice in the novelty fabrics. The backing are spoons and forks. Um, or 10 inch squares. You can just pull from your 10 inch square pile from your um, layer cake. So I have 10 inch squares of cotton fabric. Remember, very, very, very important, 100% cotton fabric. Not to be made with flannel. Um, I guess you could, but the, the, the instructions pretty much are 100% cotton fabric here. Um, then what you need is very, very important. Hopefully you can see, yeah. Um, I have this. This is from Pelon, and it's called Wrap and Zap. Um, it's a natural cotton batting. Um, and it's made exactly for microwavable projects, okay? It is microwave safe. Now, I've done a lot of research <laughs> on these silly little things, and the, the, the most important thing is you have to use 100% cotton fabric, 100% cotton thread, 100% cotton batting. Now, having said that, a lot of people choose to use their regular batting. As you know, I use Warm and Plush or Warm and Natural from the Warm Company, but I've even heard that they, even those batting, it says 100% cotton, they have tiny little, tiny, tiny little metal flakes in them. I don't know if that's true. It says 100% cotton. This cotton batting looks very similar to any other cotton batting I've ever, ever used, but for some miraculously, I don't know, idea, it is microwave safe. So if you indeed are, as I was saying, going to be putting these in the microwave, um, I would suggest you use this. Now there is from the Warm Company also, uh, who do a lot to do batting, there is called Warm Tater. Um, again, I, I, I've never seen that, but I have, again, read about it. And this is from Pelon. A lot of other companies have um, microwavable safe batting. Just be very, very uh, careful to use cotton batting. You don't want to put anything metal. If you remember our uh, oven gloves, we're not putting them in the microwave. Um, so the insula that, that, that uh, batting that I had was called Insulbrite. You don't want to use that. That is for, uh, don't, it's not to be mistaken for the, this wrap and zap. Um, the Insulbrite has metal in it, and obviously you don't want to be putting anything metal into your microwave. So that's that 100% cotton batting, 100% cotton fabric. I have 100% cotton thread. We want our two, two 10 inch squares, and then what we want to do is our first step, our, or before, our, before we sew, we want to have, and I cut from here, we want to have two nine inch squares of batting. And all you're going to be doing is laying that on your, the wrong side of your fabric, pretty side down. You're going to just be centering this nine inch piece of batting onto your 10 inch square. Now I'm just going to go over to my machine and you could pin it if you want to secure it. I, I don't need to. I'm just going to stitch an X just across there. Now on the, on the, um, the side, the inside that you see, this is the backing. This is what you see that you set your bowl in. You might want to do even a decorative stitch along here. Maybe that's when your decorative stitches on your, um, sewing machine could come, could, you could do that. Just just do it along there. And, you, and um, you'll see how that turns out. I'm just going to be doing an X. This is a very, very simple, basic one. You could get all cute and quilt this inside. Um, I've seen that done in a grid pattern. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm literally just going to secure my batting down in an X for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go over to my machine and I'll be back having shown you how I've secured this down. So as you can see, 
I've stitched down my batting. I've used black thread because of the black and the black and the bobbin here. I've stitched down my X and you see these funky marks. I'm going to get to that right now. As you can see on both sides there is my X. I just eyeballed it from corner to corner. Now as we were ta I was saying these we have to create the darts of this. Remember remember in um dressmaking we created darts to to form the to form the um shape so what you want to do is with any type of ruler, and I used a Sharpie for, again, for demonstration purposes because this will get cut out. Um, you can use a pencil or a chalk or whatever find you uh, works best for marking. What you want to do on all, all eight sides of, of the four uh, the four sides, both pieces, what you want to do is you want to take your rule and you want to... You want to mark down from the top of the batting, not the top of the fabric. You want to mark the, from the top of your batting, center your rule right in the middle of this X, which is pretty much in the middle of your fabric here, and put your ruler at the top of the batting and mark down two and a quarter inches and just put a dot, right? And then you know, sort of squaring it up, you just want to lightly make a line to there, to that dot. Do it on all pieces. These are creating our dots. You want to find your center point, come to the top of the batting, and make your dot, and then bring your Sharpie down. So we have the makings of our darts on both pieces, top and back. Now what you want to do is you want to take your rule and we're going to mark an inch away from this line all around the darts. So what you want to do is you want to put your inch marker on your ruler on that red line and then line your inch up on the red line and then make a, make a dot at the end down to the beginning of your rule down to two inches. Now what you're going to do is we are going to connect this dotted this dot to that dot there to the bottom of our line. So we're just going to take our sharpie or our marker and just you can see make your from the bottom and there you have our our marked dart. So I'll just come along. Oh, this is getting red sharpie all over it. It's okay. I'm just going to make my dot, my dot, mark it from the bottom to there and to there. Now I'll do that all the way around. Um, what you want to do next, after you've marked everything, we're going to be stitching. Now this is important that you remember. We're going to be stitching on that red line. We're not going to we're not going to be stitching anywhere else. We're going to be stitching on the red line. So, to make it a little bit easier, take a nice sharp pair of scissors. You can just eyeball this. Don't cut on the red line. Be very very careful. Just cut in about a quarter of an inch and take out this material here because then you'll see if you just stitch along there uh, cut along there I should say and then you're just taking this triangle of fabric out you want some nice sharp scissors and there what we're going to be doing is we're going to be folding this along the edges match up and there is our dart. We're going to be stitching, stitch from the top down to the point. I back stitch here, I reinforce, and then I reinforce about a quarter, a half an inch away, and then I, I go off of, uh, as a dart is, you go off of your fabric at that point. You just go off your fabric. So remember that, I'll do this one. I've, I've, I've marked it along here. I'm going to go along, not on the red, about a quarter inch and about a quarter inch. 
Got some nice sharp scissors. And we're going to do that. I'll mark this one here. I'll put my 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 one inch there, my two, and then I'll just connect that line to make your dart. So you want to mark, you can ma maybe mark all eight of them at one time. Once you do this, you'll freak out how quick and easy these are to make and how, how effective and um, what a nice gift, if you like them. I'm still debating whether I like them or not. Um, so I've marked that off four, not on the red line. I want to go about a quarter of an inch. I'm getting rid of this triangle of fabric here. And, and uh, then I'm going to be stitching. I'm going to be stitching. This is what you end up with. I'm going to be stitching my darts. Remember, starting at the end of the fabric and stitching off of the batting and the fabric together. You might want to pin that if you're not, you know, if you're not sure. And then we're just going to do that on all, on both of these things. And then I'll show you how to, we're going to connect them. So I've just gone along and I've stitched my darts, as you can see. And I actually did reinforce at the top and a reinforce down at the dart there, just to make sure they're nice. And as you can see, it's the dart shape. Fits over your booby. <laughs> um, so there you have the back of your bowl, but just keep it like that for now. And you'll see we have the makings of a nice little bowl like that. Um, each side as I showed you in the beginning. So whatever size bowl you have to hold it, um, it's nice. Now just a little hint. We have this one now. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing my, um, my, my front here as I showed you. I've already cut out, but I just wanted to show you um, what I've done is if you make one and you quite enjoy making them, maybe what you want to do to save your time from marking with a ruler, which only takes a few seconds, but what I've actually done is I will, I've actually made a, get my pair of scissors, I actually have made a pattern. Now I took two pieces of card and I've um, actually joined them together with tape um, because if I make quite a lot of these, what I've done is I've actually... As you can see, there's my pattern. After I've cut my 10 inches, I've just come along and I've, or however, however it is, it should be the exact thing. It, that's it. Um, I've just cut my, I've just marked my pattern with my V's. And when I cut this um, out, this will be my pattern. I then don't have to, if I'm going to be making them on mass, as it were, I don't have to worry about all of that marking. I've just... Um, I've just have a pattern. So it's the 10 inches wide. Um, so if, if, if you want to do this, if you're comfortable with marking, by all means continue marking. But if I make more, then I can just, what I can just affix my, I can affix my batting, stick that down and, and, um, and, uh, cut. And then, and then on my thing, I can, I'm going to be stitching. I've cut out the, the V and then I'll be stitching the quarter of an inch where I've marked it but my when so I've cut out the V and then I'll be stitching along this part when we put our fabrics together so I'm just going to be that's just a little handy hint if you wanted to if you like I mean if you enjoy making them um then you can make a lot with this pattern instead of uh, going back and marking them so I'm just going to be stitching this and I'll show you the next step so I've, I've told you how I stitch from the from this point on to the dart, but I just thought um, as I do, I, I, since you're beginners, you just want to you want to put these these pretty sides together. We're creating this dart here and we're going make sure your fabric's all tucked in. It's very important that your fabrics, your, your pretty fabrics all tucked in. So you you create that dart. And you start, what I do is I start on the batting because it's a little bit thicker. Um, and then I just back stitch up the fabric. And then I just come along pretty much on that red mark and then I back stitch again just to, just to secure this dart. And then right off. 
then there's my there's my seam, my dart all stitched on that um, on the pretty one. And I'll just go back. And again, when you stitch this, you want to make sure your fabric, your your pretty sides are nice and even and they're together. You don't want any tucks on your front because this is what you're going to be seeing. Match up your tops there. Match up your top here. And then just stitch, put the, ed put the edges together, and then just stitch along that red seam to make a perfect dart. So now that we've sewn our darts on both of our pieces, what we have are two bowl-looking things. So now all we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the pretty sides together, right sides together. Now what you want to do is um, e either or, but I, I take the top piece, this is what it looks like, and I'm going to just turn that inside out, make sure your darts are all nice and out, and you're going to be putting it inside your backing piece. Okay, you're going to be putting that inside. You're just, we're just stitching the right sides together. Um, where are my pins? Oh, I don't know where my pins are. Um, so anyway, what you probably would want to do is because you've cut it just perfect and you've, because you've stitched the darts, your, your sides are going to match up beautifully. Your 10 inch squares are going to match up beautifully. Um, so you're going to want to be pinning this all along from corner down to the dart. And you want to just, you just want to perhaps, if you can, um, it's about half an inch, but if you can, do it about half an inch. If it, if it catches this, that's good. If it doesn't, don't worry about it because we're going to come back and we are going to top stitch this bit here. So I don't like to catch that batting, but if it does catch on either side, that's fine. So you're going to stitch three sides along. The fourth side, what you're going to do, having pinned and matched your darts, is you're going to leave a gap on either side of one dart about an inch and a half or maybe two inches. So you want to start from the corner, stitch down to there, start from this corner, stitch down to about there. Because this opening is where, where we're going to turn our little baby inside out. So by all means, go get your pins and pin from here around all the way on all three sides and then back down on your fourth side just to about an inch and a half below the corner. So you have left a gap a nice size gap. It's up to you how big you want to be able to turn it, but I, I leave about a five, four and a half, five inch gap to be able to turn it inside out. So I'm going to do that now. So I've wanted to show you how I actually have pinned this together. My corners are together. We've, we've sewed it pretty exact, so they match up pretty well. Um, I've started a little bit, I've started on this end at just about an inch in, um, and then I'm going to turn and pivot at this corner. Now this dart, um, it's, a, it's, it's fairly bulky, but it's almost the same principle as nesting your seams. Push, sort of push the dart, one dart this way, the other dart that way. Um, quite a few of the people say press your darts open for um, uh, so it's not so bulky. It's bulky anyway, so I don't really care. But maybe if you want to press these darts open, um, yeah, knock yourself out. Press them open. I didn't. So what I'm going to be doing is I've pinned it along, and I'm going to come down to the dart on this point here, and I'm just going to I'm going to sew down here, and it's about half an inch. And if I catch that, it's fine. If I don't, it's fine. Um, because it's secured when I top stitch it anyway. I'm going to come back to this point, And because it's sort of a V, I'm going to put my needle down. And then turn it and stitch along back up there. So I've already, my hands, sorry, my hands are in the way. I have to, I have to hold my fabrics together. So I put my presser foot down. I stitch, making sure everything is smooth underneath. I go to, I, sti I stitch over pins, you shouldn't do that. I come right to the dart, put my needle down, pivot, my presser foot comes up automatically, and then just come back up this point here. And if, that, if your batting gets caught in it, that's fine. Or if not, and then just come along and to my edge, and I've matched these points up real good here. 
I come up to my I come up to my corner. There is my stitching to secure my batting down. I put my needle down and I just come back down having having a um, secured this nice along here with my pins and I'll just come back down on this on this side back down to the dart and uh, over again and then just remember you have to leave an opening so from on this point I'll leave an opening from about here to about there as I've shown you here we are I've just stitched these pieces together, pretty sides together, right sides together. And you know what I've done? Of course, it's me. I've reinforced. I've gone back and stitched this twice. I just think if you're going to catch your batting, I just like to reinforce. So there I catch my batting, there I didn't. Um, I've, I've just stitched, I've come along and I've stitched this twice, down to the dart and up, having left my opening. Now, before we turn it inside out, what you're wanting to doing is you just want to cut off the corners. Careful not to cut into the stitches. Just cut off the corners because hopefully when we turn this around, um, we're going to have some nice, we're going to just push this into the nice corners. So we find our opening here having stitched it and I actually did I actually really back stitched back stitch this part of the opening just so it doesn't rip apart when we're turning it because it's rather bulky so here it is let's see if I've screwed up or if it's turned out good um yeah this actually is the first one I've ever made <laughs> so you may not be seeing this video if it doesn't turn out um so we push the corners out. Where was the other corner? Wait a second. Push that corner out. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, push this corner. So there's four corners, right? So that's the back. Oh, it looks small. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks okay. Oh, look at that. It's a little bit smaller than I thought. What the heck? What? Wait a minute. Now, now I'm going to top stitch along. It looks smaller. I'll pull out these corners a little bit more. Where's the opening? Oh yeah, here. So really push these corners out. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's okay. Now, let me get my trusty bowl out. See what this thing looks like. Oh yeah. It doesn't fit a large bowl though. Huh. But that is cute. What the heck? What do you think? What do you think? I think that's cute. Yeah. Actually for ice cream, I guess a bowl of hot soup, it works. It works. Let's see the bigger one. Well, I've already seen this. Yeah, that works. It's not as big as I thought. Huh, whatever. That's a 10 inch square. Maybe you can do it a bit bigger. Anyway, it looks cute. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do, it's a little bit thick here, oh, but I can do it. I'm just literally going to top stitch very, very closely to this edge. Again, just down and then up to the point and then up to this point. Um, there's a little bit left of um, fabric that doesn't have the batting in it. And then when we come to this bit here, you might want to pin it, tuck all that rubbish in. You might want to pin it down to the dart. And then just tuck those ends along, and that's the important part. Just top stitch right along there, and um, yeah, right a, right along the end, and um, sort of push it into each other. Yeah, that does actually it does it just sort of does get a bit bigger. Yeah, yeah. Still don't know whether I like it or not. Anyway, there's a microwave bowl cozy. So, um, yeah, I, with this batting, I think if we use thinner batting, I'm surprised that the zap, this batting is a little bit thick. So maybe, yeah, maybe if you use a 100% cotton, um, that's pretty thin. But, but maybe, I don't know, this is meant for this. So it's meant for it, and I feel safer that this is microwave safe, but I've seen other tutorials that you just use 100% cotton, but it's a little bit thick to my mind. Um, it's nice, it's nice. You're not going to burn your hands, and that's the whole point of it. Um, so, yeah, 
Um, but maybe if I made another one, I'd actually make it maybe like 12, uh, 11 inches or 12 inches even um, to make it come out here. Although you don't have to. You're just, you're just doing that. So anyway, there's my little tutorial. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, that's cool. I'm not sure if I like it. Um, but anyway, they're all the rage. Everybody's making a million of them for gifts and whatever. Um, so yeah, it looks like a cute bowl. Looks, it'll look nice in my kitchen. My kids will use it for ice cream or soup or something. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Thanks, folks.